my internet friends, it's Bad Edits, and today I'm going to be teaching you all about how to edit in the keyframes. And yeah, that's pretty much it, so let's get it popping. Alright, so first thing- Firth? Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, first things first, you're going to open Video Star, duh, and click on this little plus sign in the corner. So, you're going to choose your video format. Personally, I like the square one. And you're going to choose Select Song or Edit Video. And Select Song, all you do is- select a song that's it and then you just like hold on i'm gonna turn on my volume so i don't get copyrighted fun stuff and the entire song is here so you can set your start and set your end on where you want it to start and end obviously and to listen to the full playback you just click on this little anyway and then you can adjust the speed and pitch. I'm sorry if you can't read it because I know it's pink as shit, but like that's how I like it. And if you're satisfied with it, you obviously press make video. I don't want this, so we're going to go back. And the other option, of course, is edit video. And I think that's what I'm going to do because I feel like it. And then obviously you're just going to select your video, the audio that you want. And we're going to start it right here and at the other triangle. Now see how the triangle lights up, like pink, for you it's probably not pink, whatever your background color is or whatever you selected it as, but it lights up a certain color and that means that it's on the triangle and the triangle is on beat. So yeah, and obviously to listen to the little playback. And then this is your background color, so you can go ahead and select that if you care, but we don't, so <laughs> we're just going to make the video. So what we're going to do next is go edit, and we could do the quick split because what we're going to do is split the video, that way we can make transitions and stuff, but we're going to go to multi-split because that will allow us to see where it's on beat, and I'm just kidding because that looks really off beat and I don't know why, so we're going to go ahead and retry that. Yeah, second tutorial for free, free of charge, guys, you're welcome. I don't know why I did that, it was perfectly fine last time, but like, go off, I guess. Hello, please work. <laughs> Yay, there we go, it's complete. I don't know why it did that, it's on crack or something. Anyway, so what we're gonna do now is go to new, import photo or import video. If you wanna import a video, I don't. I typically edit with photos because videos take up a lot of storage. So we're not gonna do that. Um, hold on, let me get a photo here. Oh yeah, and then press this button if you want it to be squared or whatever you want it to be. We want it to be squared, so we're gonna do that. And then in the next clip, new, import photo again. And that's not right. Yay. And there. Beautiful. Gorgeous. All right. So now to get to the keyframes, we're going to go new, multi-layer. And here we are. <laughs> okay. So first things first, this is our background, of course. This is our background once again. <laughs> we can click on it. We can choose the color that we want. I think I'm just going to go with black. Stop it. Oh, my God does that all the time and I hate it anyway <laughs> so we can click on number one which is going to be our first layer of course and we have all these options we have copy which we can't do yet because we have no layers so far we have color text photo particles 3d object draw and zaps we're just gonna click the photo that we already imported but if you didn't import a photo you can just click on number one or whatever your layer you're in click photo and you can import it through there Although, I don't do that because if you ever have, have to go back on a photo, you already have it saved in your library, I guess? I don't know. You have it saved in there, so yeah. Alright, so now, in the layers, we're going to click on 1, Edit Keyframes, and now we're in the keyframes. Cool. Swag. Anyway, so this little thing in the corner is our grid. Doesn't do much. <laughs> I mean, it's very helpful, but in terms of 
editing and how cool it's going to make your edit doesn't really do much. It doesn't give off an effect that your audience will see. It's just for you personally as an editor. So if you want something to be exactly squared in this little corner, there you go. Now you have it. And quick little tip, instead of having to like move it and try to like adjust it perfectly, you can just press this little X right here. There you go. And that works with anything in here. Like if you turn it this way, the little X over here, turn it perfectly back to normal. All right, next one. I'm going to turn off grid. So this is just if we want our background, not really our background, a different sort of background to be either gray or black. See, this is our, oh shit, this black part is our technical background, but if we don't want to see the background, we can go to show other layers, take that off, and then we have this, which, I don't know, I don't really use that, I don't find that helpful in any way, but you know what, it's there, it's an option. And these little arrows, self-explanatory, you go up, you go sideways, that's about it. And this little anchor right here is, I don't really know how to describe it. I know what it does. I don't know how to describe it. You know what I mean? No, you don't, because this is a tutorial. <laughs> Never mind. So this little circle right here in the middle, it like tells multi-layer and the keyframes and whatever you want to call it, it tells your program to follow that little circle. So if we use size over here, it's going to follow the circle. You know what I mean? Like it's going to go towards the circle. It's in the center, so it's going to go towards the center. And it's in the center, so if you want it to spin, it's going to spin from the center. You know what I mean? I know that's confusing, sorry. But if we click on the anchor, which obviously this little dot is our anchor, and we move it up, see this is where grids come in handy. So now, our anchor is down there. So it tells the keyframes that we want the circle to be, or down there to be the main focus. You know, I don't know how to describe it. Hopefully that makes sense. And obviously it's not gonna turn from the middle anymore. It's gonna turn from the bottom. You get it? You got it? Good, cool, swag. Oops. Oh well, gotta fix that. So the next thing is these little arrows over here. And basically all they do is if you have like something over here and then something over here, see these little marks? So if you want to move between marks, you have that. Which obviously this is only a 0 0.10 second clip, so we can move between the marks pretty easily without an issue. But in longer clips, you'll have like a mark like right here. And then like in the next like millisecond, it'll be right there and it'll be hard to like find that little mark again so these come in handy during longer clips but not really during short clips unless you're lazy like me and you use them regardless then yeah pretty handy and then over here is just your music i have it turned off right now because like i said gotta make some money can't get this video copyrighted you know how it be and this is just on beat we don't have any beats here but if we did it would there would be like little marks telling us like hey, the beat is right here, so do like a fun little transition or a jump or something. I don't know. Usually you would mark that, and I'm sorry you don't have that example, but just so you know. So, now we're over to opacity, and self-explanatory, just, you turn it down. And there you go. <laughs> that's, that's it. So, we can also click on this little square over here, and it'll change to layout. And what you're going to do with layout is go back and click layout. And anything you choose here is going to be the little layout panel over there. You know what I mean? So if we were to use a shape like this, you can go back into the keyframes and play with the layout here. And it's going to affect that, obviously. And now you'll see that it only goes up and down. That's because it just affects, like, the thickness of the star. <laughs> I'm so sick, guys. What the hell? <laughs> I, I know I sound so gross and my voice is, like, so raspy. I'm so very sorry. I don't usually sound like this. And I feel gross. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just sick, I guess. Anyway, I don't have corona. Please don't attack me. <laughs> 
anyway yeah so you can also adjust the thickness of the star with this panel right here but obviously you can't see it as well so if you were to go into the keyframes you would see it better and this little panel it just affects the shape of what you want it to look like and that's it so oh also if you have it moved over double tap back to normal all right so also with layout if we were to do a transition like what should we do swirl oh god that is hideous <laughs> so sorry cherry <laughs> oh my god see okay anyway it's at zero now so we're gonna turn it up to i don't know 15 and make her hideous i guess and yeah basically that's pretty much it <laughs> anyway so size is our next thing and that is that's it <laughs> it's just size i think you know how sizing works you've been through third grade i'm assuming so yeah you just turn it up turn it down you want it down here you want it up here boom there you go all right so now if you click on this little arrow it's gonna do color what's color mar i'll show you guys i'm so glad you asked color is right here and if you didn't catch that you just go back and color that that's it i'm assuming you guys can see the video but i apologize if that's hard to understand anyway so i don't know which one should we do saturation am i saying that right i hope i am i've been saying it like, like that for like years now so anyways so the color is obviously in black and white now, but we can turn it up and down, obviously with the color bar. And yay, that's what color does. It just turns on and off your color here and or it changes it like this one. See, like it doesn't turn it on and off. It's just like whatever the color option gives you, if that makes sense. And you can also do that with this, ah oh crap, this little bar right here. But if you want it to be precise, of course, you'll go into multi-layer. You're like, I want it exactly at 27. You can have it exactly at 27. And there you go. It's gorgeous now. All right. Now that's it. So these ones, once again, self-explanatory. This one, you want it to move side to side. You can move it side to side. Up and down. You can move it up and down. You want to move it the other side to side. You can move it other side to side. And there you go. You just use this little tool right here. If you want it to move right, you just pull it to the right. You want it to move left, pull it to the left. That's it. That's all you gotta do. And yeah, that's pretty much it for inside the keyframes. All right, now the other thing that we have is options. So you'll see mine says default to smooth paths because that's, I forgot to turn that back on. Go me. Oh my God, guys, you see it says default to straight paths. It definitely didn't say smooth paths earlier and I don't know why I can't speak right now, but you know what, that's cool. Anyways, so you're going to want it to say default to straight paths because that will mean that you are on smooth paths. And obviously you don't want it to be straight because if it's straight, then it's not smooth. And if it's not smooth, then it's choppy and it's horrible. I'm just kidding. It's not horrible. But still, you want it to be smooth. So the next thing we have is center layer. Oh no, it's not in the center. What should we do? There you go. Problem solved. That's pretty much all that does. And show other layers. We don't really have any other layers right now except for our background. But if we did, I'm just going to add a random layer here. We can't see it, obviously. So options, show other layers. Number two, there it is. And now it's blocking cherry, so let's get rid of it. We don't have anything here yet because we don't have any paths. So that's our path. Does nothing. Good for us. Looks really choppy. <laughs> so now that we have our path, this is our path right here. So if we want it to flip horizontally, it can do that. Or vertically, it can do that. And that's literally it. But we don't want either of those because that's ugly. <laughs> and copy keyframes from layer two. So if we want this layer to also have that ugly choppy path, we can also make the first layer have it by clicking that same button. And that's horrible, so we're gonna delete it. <laughs> Okay, now we can also do delete all keyframes because we have this path and we don't like it, so bye. And that will delete everything, so like if you have something you really like and you're like, oh, I just want to delete like this little part, then don't press delete all keyframes, just delete it like, I don't know, you have it set at 200, just press this little X right here. 
And there you go. So then you could save whatever you wanted to save. And hide dots, I don't really know how that's productive because it just hides your little centerpiece, your anchor. I guess some people are annoyed by that. I'm personally not. I would like to see where my edit is going and stuff like that. I don't know. That's just totally how I feel. Now, with this little QR code over here, let's say you made a great, I don't know, transition or curve or whatever. And you're like, this is so good. Everyone is going to be so bald. Like, no one will have a single eyebrow hair after watching this. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. Let's... We're just going to do that. Okay. So, if you want to save this, this little keyframe right here, you can click this QR code and press share. And then share. And, um, name it whatever you want. Something that you'll remember. Next. And save to photo library. And now you'll have that, this little thing. I don't know, timeline, I guess. So, we don't have that anymore. Oh no, what do we do? Press the little QR code, import, yes. And now we have it again. Yeah, basically that's it. You can save QR codes, you can share them. And remember that if you use a QR code from the keyframes, it will only work in the keyframes. It will not work in any other part of Video Star. It's just the keyframes. And that's how it goes for everything else. If you use something for multi-layer, it will only work in multi-layer. If you use something in re-effect clip, then it will only work in re-effect clip. Now, the other thing in Video Star is the key. No, I'm just kidding. It's the curves. <laughs> okay, so we want a transition that zooms out. So it's already set here. It's at zero, just where we need it to be. Or I mean 100, what? <laughs> it's already at 100 here. Okay, it's set. So we're going to make it go down to 65. And we're going to... Okay, let me slow down. <laughs> so these are the preset curves that we have. They're great. Video started great. But also, they're horrible. And video started horrible. <laughs> so we're going to click custom. And then... This is our keyframe. I've explained this in a video before, but obviously I'm not going to make you go rewatch that. So we want this to be a transition that goes from slow to fast. So we're going to go like over here, press this little plus sign and make it look like this ish. Okay, so what's happening here is that if it's on this line or below it hold on <sighs> fuck i don't know how to explain this so if we want to change if we want a transition that goes from slow to fast we want it to look like a hill that goes from like not steep to steep you know what i mean See, notice how it goes just like a little bit here and then it just like goes immediately up like it's steep. Like that's how the curves work. I don't really know how to explain it. It makes sense in my mind. I don't know if it makes sense to you guys. But like if it's like not steep, if it's just like spread out like this a little bit, that just basically means it's going to go slow. But if it's super steep, that means it's going to go fast. And if we wanted it to be fast to slow we would do it the other way around where it would be steep on this end see like that then we'd go over here and yeah see like steep and then it spreads out it gets wider you know hopefully you understand if you don't i'm sorry i think i explain it better in my curves video so you can go check that out or you can get some qr codes from that video because i did put put them in there, post them in there. You know what? I don't know English today. Actually, I don't know English for all 16 years of my life. So that's really cool. Hey guys, editing Mar here. Um, just for a little more clarification, because this is the most confusing clip I think I've ever recorded. Basically, if you want it to go from slow to fast, your curve should look like this. Okay, like a check mark. And if you want it to go fast to slow, reverse check mark. Okay. Because the steeper it is, you know, I'm going to stop fucking saying that because that is not helpful at all. Hopefully you get it. If you don't, I'm sorry. 
I don't really know how to explain it. It's just, yeah. Anyway. And once again, you can save it as a QR code, but remember, if you save it as a curve, it will only save as a curve. You can only use it as a curve. And of course, this is the delete button as you just saw me use. This is the straight or smooth button. We have it set as smooth. That's good. Leave it that way. Okay. So the next thing about the curves is that if you have it, hold on, let me set a good curve here. If you have it where it's below the line, it will, see how it kind of like jump, like it does a little jerk, like it goes. Hey guys, editing Mar again because I'm super stupid and I don't know how to explain things properly. So obviously it's below this little line right here. You see that line? Great, perfect, good. So our curve, this fun little check mark right here. Notice how it goes down, so it zooms in. But what we want it to do is to zoom out. And it obviously does that over here. So having your curve under the line is going to make it do the opposite of what you want it to do, which can give off a really cool effect. See how we want it to zoom out, but first it zooms in and then it zooms out. It's cool, which is good. And it can work in any scenario. So we want it to spin. Let's get rid of the size. So we want it to spin. We can go in the curves and do the exact same thing. See, we wanted it to spin right, but first it jerks by spinning left and then spinning right. You see, so it can give off a cool effect and it's something that I would recommend trying every now and then because it actually looks really cool. So yeah, hopefully that explains it better. All right, next thing, we're gonna go back. This technically isn't a keyframe, but whatever. So this little mirror button over here, you have all these different options for mirror. I think the most popular would be this one and the second would be this one. Um, lately, I really like this one, but I think for professional reasons, we're just gonna use this one. So if you don't want it to have the black background, you can just set it as the mirror. And then to make it smooth, you have tracking blur, which mine is starred, so it's like over here, but yours would be somewhere, I don't know, over here with the other blurs, yeah. It's a good guess. It's a really good guess, Mar. Good job. And then you can obviously adjust it here. Or you can adjust it in color. But remember, if you adjust it in color and your, like, little scrolly ball, whatever, is all the way over here, like, see how it's set at 29? If we put it at 54, it'll only be 54 over here. And it'll be 29 over here. I don't know if that's obvious to some of you or not, but I'm just saying. And that's how it goes for everything. See, like, the size is 99, but we can change it to 129. But it's still going to be 100 over here, and it's going to change throughout the timeline. And that's why we use curves, so we can add smoothness, so it doesn't look so choppy, it doesn't look so boring, you know? And oh, this little button, if it's not obvious... This will just take you to more layers if you need them. If you're doing a really complex edit, if you're doing like 3D edits and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you guys like this tutorial and I'm realizing that I put in another thing. Didn't even use it, that's all right, whatever. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you hated it, please give it a big thumbs up because that is very well appreciated. I love you, thank you, and bye.